This is the internet of money. It's not just money for the internet. And once you realize that you can build applications on top of this, and currency, the Bitcoin currency, is just the first application. It's like email on the internet. It's good enough to change the world and have everyone adopt the internet. But it was just the beginning. But you don't even imagine what comes next. The worldwide Twitter, web. Facebook, the World Wide Web. We haven't even built those things yet. Yeah. Some of the people here are building them. Contract systems and platforms based on things like Ethereum, uh, multiple currencies that can be built on top of Bitcoin. Systems for a decentralized exchange of value where you can transfer from one currency to another. Programmable money is is really interesting. Let me give you just one example, which I think your your uh, audience will like very much. And this is the concept of a distributed autonomous corporation. At the moment, every payment system in the world, every currency system in the world, is requires. Uh, that the ownership of money is associated with personhood. That means that money can be controlled either by human beings, persons, or the, the constructs built through association, uh, artificial personhood or corporations, um, that can manage money on behalf of shareholders or behalf of individuals through institutional controls. Mm -hmm. The one thing you can't do is you can't have autonomous systems manage money. Uh, they have to be attached to a person. Bitcoin doesn't see personhood. It's not designed to go around personhood. It simply doesn't see personhood. It doesn't see people any more than it sees borders. Just like on the internet, you know, the famous saying, in the internet, no one knows you're a dog, <laughs> from the cartoon from the 80s. Um, it, it essentially removes uh, personhood from the equation. Now, what that means is you can have autonomous systems that can control and manage money. One of the concepts that comes out of that is the concept of the distributed autonomous corporation, which is um, a construct, an autonomous system that owns resources, money, on the internet uh, through Bitcoin or some related technology, and then acts in the interests of shareholders, who may be other autonomous systems or people, doesn't matter, and then can make decisions, spend money and allocate resources in a completely autonomous manner. Let me give you a post-singularity example. It almost sounds like money for artificial intelligences. Imagine a, a weak AI system whose goal is to optimize publishing of content. and It can use a Bitcoin bank account to pay for hosting on, say, Amazon Elastic Cloud. Uh, which is one of the cloud computing services. It can now buy a month of hosting. During that month, it can then establish a number of blogs and publish news by harvesting it off the web. Then it collects micropayments from the readers of those blogs. And if one of the news sites it builds is popular and successful, it collects more micropayments. If one of these sites becomes more successful than the others, it can spin off a copy of itself, a subsidiary that divests, that then goes out and launches more news based on that code pattern. And then it can buy more hosting capability to pay for the next month of its hosting and bandwidth. If it gets really successful, it can increase the amount of bandwidth it's paying. Mm -hmm. It could also, presumably, um, improve its own code simply by posting ads on forums to hire developers to write better code for itself. And then it can do A-B testing. Take two versions of the code written by two developers, put them out there, and whichever one succeeds in delivering the product or service it's delivering, collects more payments from its users and thrives, and the ones that don't essentially lose the ability to pay for their own hosting and they die. If you do that on a large enough scale, you now have an evolutionary environment for artificial intelligence which can manage its own resources. This is evolution in action. You could literally have a self-evolving autonomous system that can expand when it's successful and contract when it's failing, and spawn new generations of itself that are self-improving. Ah, you know, I, I've never been asked that question in Brazil yet. <laughs> it only comes up at every meeting. Um, 
I'm, I'm really uh, very interested in Ethereum. Um, I've worked in Ethereum from the very beginning. I've uh, watched closely the development. I've written smart contracts, and I continue to work in Ethereum. I think Ethereum is a fascinating technology. It shows um, how diverse the ecosystem of uh, blockchains and cryptocurrencies can be. Um, I think it's important to understand that it solves different problems from the problems that Bitcoin solves. And I think it coexists. In fact, it works best in coexistence with Bitcoin. Bitcoin provides robust security as a reserve currency and trusted ledger with very, very strong immutability and unforgeability. Um, and part of the reason it achieves that is by being simple in its construction, which means it can't do smart contracts. Ethereum is more complex in its construction, which means it can do smart contracts, but as a result, it loses some of the uh, robustness that Bitcoin has, which means they work very well together um, and can coexist very strongly together. I think we're going to see some very interesting things. Of course, you know, it, Bitcoin is still an experiment at seven years old. Ethereum is even more of an experiment uh, at one year old, and so we're going to see a lot of uh, change over time as we try to learn what it means to build smart contracts uh, on blockchains. Yeah, maybe this fits really good, this question after. I'm uh, Fabian, I'm the uh, lead dev developer for the Ethereum project. I built the Mist browser. Um, for which project? The Ethereum project. I've heard of it. Yes, I guess so. Um, yeah, when you're describing these building blocks, which is a, it's a really nice way of describing it, because it actually in, internally works um, different than it does from the outside, like you say. Um, I would like to hear your opinion about um, Ethereum in, uh, in general, because the Bitcoin uh, building blocks, it's rather like you have Lego with three pieces only, while having a smart contract language where you can build whatever you want, you basically have an unlimited amount of building blocks. Yes. And therefore, like doing things like, for example, what uh, the previous questioner said or asked was exactly is rather simple to do because you can build whatever you want. You can build whatever distribution system in a smart contract you want. Yeah. So I would like to hear your opinion about Ethereum, smart contracts in general, and um, like. Yeah, the future where the blockchain is moving, okay. right? Um, I'm a fan of Ethereum. I, I was involved in Ethereum from before Ethereum launched, because Vitalik was uh, kind enough to share the white paper with me for comment before he published it. Um, and I, I've been involved and fascinated from the very first day. And when he sent me the paper, I called him up to ask him and to talk to him about all the ways I thought this wouldn't work. Skepticism is healthy, and he persuaded me that, in fact, he had really good answers to those things. Um, you know, there is a balance to be struck between having pieces in your Lego set that do more interesting things, and there are some things you really can't do with a square piece that has four bumps on it. You just can't. You can't make a wheel out of it. You can't make a head of a little person out of it. Um, you can't make a, a window out of it, a transparent thing out of it. Which is why in Lego you have those things specifically designed as the exception. But if you've ever gone to one of these exhibitions, you've probably seen them make entire buildings, the the Death Star, um, the Star Trek Enterprise, the Empire State Building, out of just simply different colored four square blocks. Because at enough resolution, you can do some quite amazing things, even just with little square blocks. There is a place for both. and I think those two technologies work really well together. Bitcoin, because it is more limited, um, on purpose, quite, quite honestly, is designed to deliver a very solid, very wide foundation um, that has very, very robust security. Which is why, even though Ethereum is one sixth of the capitalization, it is one two hundred and fifty thousandth of the security power uh, in terms of the hashing uh, power that goes behind it. Um, 
For some things, you need a very solid, wide foundation, and for some things, you need a spike. Right? You need something that is very focused. And the two work very good together. Uh, in fact, I think Ethereum can use some of the underlying security in Bitcoin to become even more robust itself. We don't know yet. Um, I'm interested in both, and I'm even more interested in the broader idea, which is how do you use the technologies within both Ethereum and Bitcoin to do things like two-way pegged side chains and dynamic decentralized exchanges between the two, so that you can have an Ethereum contract that's paid for in Bitcoin that controls a Bitcoin wallet or something else. So you can use everything for what it's best for. Um, and they can work synergistically. The best part about Ethereum for me was that two years ago, when we had a crisis in Bitcoin, people were like, empty Gox exploded. Oh my God, we're going to lose all our money. So they sold Bitcoin and went into fiat. And this year, they're like, oh, my Kern blew everything up. Bitcoin's dead again for the hundred and twelfth time. And this time they didn't go into fiat. A good third of them went into Ethereum. It was like, whoa. That's like not getting off the bus, but changing to another bus. And the end result was when the prices of both went up, more people from the outside joined both Bitcoin and Ethereum, and the whole space got bigger. Um, cryptocurrencies work really well together. The barriers for liquidity are very low. Um, they make uh, great synergistic partners. So I'm very excited about the development of other cryptocurrencies that are now robust enough to stand on their own and to provide um, you know, partnership with Bitcoin and promote the entire space. They're not competitive. Um, they are addressing different needs, which is why I think Ethereum is so successful, is because it is sufficiently differentiated from Bitcoin to be focused on a different need. Um, I'm invested a bit in Ethereum. Um, so I bought like a small amount of Ether. But that's just a disclosure a necessary disclosure. <laughs>